Hello folks and welcome you. Join me today at Donington Racetrack. Yes, I'm back there again in case you haven't seen the previous video, which is I bought a 1600 quid BMW Z4. Go check that out somewhere there. But anyway, behind me is the Renault Sport Megane RS Trophy 300. It's the creme de la creme of hyper hot hatches, track oriented hot hatches, whatever you call it. If you know me well, you know that I love Renault Sports. I've had a Clio 182, I've had the Megane RSs, I've had a few of the bits, I've had a GTI Club Sport S. So, this car is very expensive. It's very, very expensive. All singing and dancing with the carbon ceramic brakes and a couple of other bits, you're looking at 70,000 pounds, which isn't cheap at all. But if you love driving, this is, well, it doesn't get much better than this. I think the next one up is basically a Porsche GT4 RS or something like that. And this car is properly serious. It's got a carbon fiber bonnet. You can specify them with um, carbon ceramic brakes. This one hasn't got it. it. It comes with basically a wheel rack in the back. So obviously all Megans come as a four door and so do the Renault Sport ones. What Renault have done is, is basically stripped 120 odd kilograms. Subject to spec, this one has got the fitted air conditioning. You kind of have that spec'd out, but that gets a bit ridiculous. You don't want a car with no air con on a few other bits really. So yeah. I'm not going to talk too much. I'm just going to go straight out on track. This is going to be like a run and gun first impressions of what the Megan RS is like when you hammer it around a circuit. It should be good. And is it worth the 50 odd thousand pounds? Let me know your thoughts and opinions already in the comment section down below of your opinions of the Megan RS. So let me give you a walk around of this trophy R. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at the back. Yes, it's got doors, but no seats. None at all. Obviously, it's fully stripped out. You've got these lovely bucket seats with four-point harness, a fire extinguisher down there. And if you open the boot, you've got storage to put your tires in. So the owner literally brings in his own tires. He runs on the Bridgestone semi six tires. Um, he's got the standard wheels. Usually these come with the red wheels with the Pilot Sport 4Ss in case, basically, if it's a little bit wet, etc. So obviously it's a dry day today, so it's running on the semi slips. If you look at the front, it's very familiar to the standard running sport again, except that it's got an upgraded short shifter, which helps with track days. The standard one is a bit notchy and you've got these lovely bucket seats. I mean, look at that with the Sabal four point harnesses, which will come in handy for the track day. But yeah, it looks really, really cool. All of them come in white. You've got the stripe down the side. You've got a couple of stickers on there as well too. You've got a carbon bonnet. Yeah, it's an aggressive bit of kit. I like the way it looks. You know that if you know cars, it's one of those, you know that this is the most expensive Megane RS and it doesn't really stick out too much. It's not as flash or as sexy as an RS3 or an A45S, but if you're new to the channel, please hit the like, subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon so you see more content on this and a few other bits. Anyway, let's go out for a drive. So usually I would start with driving the car on the road, but I've gone straight onto a track. That's not the traditional way of testing cars. And we're back at Donington. I wasn't here not too long ago in the BMW Z4. If you haven't seen that video, check it out somewhere up there. Now I'm back here in the Megan RS300. So, 1.8 litre turbocharged four cylinder. This short shifter, which is one of the slight adjustments that's been done to this car. The standard Megan one apparently is a bit is attached too notchy. This one's all right. It's a bit too close ratio, but. When you get used to it, it's it's all right, it's good. And that noise, it's 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 very familiar Megan. Like the 275 Trophy R, like the R26, you get that. It's like a sucky hair dryer with a with a pop and a bang, and I like that. It's got none of this fake, you know, pop and bang remap. I've got the systems on. Immediately, the car has got such good turning. And the brakes, it's still on the standard factory discs and pads, which means, well, no, the pads, sorry, have been upgraded. The discs are standard, my apologies. 
and Giona was telling me they don't fade at all, so let's put it up to the test. First off, for starters, the car's got immense turning. That with the quick ratio rack, it just, you could just sort of point it and steer it with so much delicacy. The rear end. It's not as lively on the rear end as the 275 Trophy R. My goodness, the 275 Trophy R was nuts. I mean, I couldn't trust letting anyone drive it. Not because I think they're an idiot or a moron. I, I just think the fact that it will just swap ends on you. It used to take at least God, three, four laps around Goodwood to get some heat into the rear tyres. It was, it was nuts. It's a busy track day today, so I'm having to be a little bit careful using the outside line. But what I've noticed is mid-corner, the LSD is helping tucking the nose in. So as you apply throttle, it's more eager to turn in. It's a little bit back to front. Still trying to get used to the box. It's a little bit tricky to use. I'm, this is literally raw cut first impressions of what the trophy R is like on track. Wow, I mean, hopefully the footage has come out all right. Let me just do a quick summary of the McGann Trophy R. Well, for starters, it's got an immense front end, probably the best turning of any front wheel drive car I've come across. Um, it's the benchmark, and rightly so, because it is expensive. The damping's nice and soft. I mean, around Donington, you've got those fast swooping bends. You didn't see on the footage, but we were keeping up with a Lotus Exige 430, which is super impressive. And yeah, I just think it's a fun bit of kit. Yeah, yeah. In the right hands, this thing would keep up with the very best of GT3s. And an M2 Comp, even with some well decent tyres and brakes, wouldn't see where this had gone. What it's like on the track, it's fantastic. 10 out of 10, great differential, great front end turn in, nice balance between oversteer, but so much, there's just so much balance in the chassis, which is really nice in this car. Good seating position, good steering, 10-10, makes sense. But now we need to see what this car's like on the road. Is it any good on the road? Well, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> Here we are then, out on the road in the Megane RS Trophy 300R. It's, it's a proper mouthful, this, isn't it? I hope the track footage came out all right. Apologies, there was an audio issue, there's a sync issue. This is run and gun type of realistic content, but on track, I'll just quickly summarize my thoughts. The turning is good, bang on. It's so confidence inspiring. Any driver skill level you're at, whether you're a racing driver or an office, it just encourages you to drive it quick, all the time. It's always on your side, the rear end's adjustable, it's got balance to spare, and you've got a nice sense of communication of what's going on within the chassis, which is nice. You don't get that on modern day cars now. So yeah, it, it's, it feels like a proper Renault Sport McGann. And the fact that I was keeping up and terrorising with Lotus Exiges and BMW M3s, I mean, I murdered an M2 competition and that car had some tasty track tyres, slick tyres. Yeah, it's a serious bit of kit. It's worth every bit of the £50,000 asking price. But, because Renault didn't sell all of them, they actually discounted the car. When I spoke to Steve about it, he actually picked this car up with a couple of thousand miles. It had the um, other wheels and tyres that came with it. So it's obviously got the OZ Racing wheels with the semi-slicks and it's got the standard wheels and he paid 40 grand for it, which when you think of it, isn't bad at all. It's about the same sort of money as what you'd pay for a GTI Club Sport S and that car's a little bit older. But now we're on the public road. Does this McGann feel good? Does it feel compromised like the 275 Trophy R? It was Larry, properly Larry. You had to be in the right frame of mind and mood to drive it, which meant that you could drive it probably three days of the year. With this, with the navigation and the aircon, and you can plug your phone and listen to your music. The performance 
well, it's probably good. Luckily, the weather is good today. Um, it did rain earlier on. You know, it's the UK, and it's June now, and our weather's never consistent, if I'm honest. But luckily, it's a dry day. Steve has the standard Mission and Pilot Sport 4Ss. That's more for winter and obviously rainy days and track days because obviously you can't run semi-slicks all the time unless you want to kill yourself. But this, it's it's great on a B-road. The damping, these Olin's dampers, believe it or not, it feels so well sorted. It's slightly bumpy, but there's a plushness to every bump you feel in it. And the faster you go, the more of a chance the dampers actually work. There's like multiple adjustment settings that you can do mechanically and Steve put it on the softest mode setting, which I'm glad because I think if I drove a factory version, I'd probably, well, I've seen the reviews, a lot of people say it's a bit too crashy. This one is actually quite all right, to be fair. And what's nice is, with this Akrapovich exhaust, it hisses, it makes all these crazy spooly noises, it, it's, it's cool. And the seating position, these seats, they're comfy. Getting in and out of them is a bit rough, but obviously it's, you're so supportive. Yeah, you can do long distances in this car without a problem at all. And this short shifter takes quite getting used to, but once you're, once you're um, used to it, it's okay. The pedals are lovely set up for heel and toe. There is turbo lag, but once you're in that nice sweet spot, it goes. The mid-range, there's plenty of power, and the lack of weight helps that very too. And considering I've literally thrashed this around the track, and I've done quite some laps as well too. Steve did a load of laps in the morning. This car doesn't live an easy long. Well, no, that, that, that makes it sound like a, I'm saying it's been abused. It's not, but it's living up to doing track days all the time. So this car spends a lot of time on track, a lot of time on the road, and it's safe to say that it is actually usable on the road. Very usable. Okay, it hasn't got the back seats, but I mean, if you were a parcel career driver, I'm pretty sure you could use this for putting parcels in, no problems at all. Or if you had a, I don't know, a tyre recovery business, emergency call out, this is the perfect car to call out for tyres, honestly. Yeah, like this sounds good. On the road, yeah, it's, it is a compromise, obviously, because it's, it's, it's a two-seater, four-door car, but it, there's something cool about it. And, and let's be real, you're not gonna have this as your only car. You know, you, you're gonna have something else. You're gonna have a daily. This is gonna be your toy. And your toy needs to feel special. And this McGann, seriously, if you love driving, if you love track days, it's, it's right up there. It's right up there with the CSL BMWs, the 1Ms, the, the, the GT4s. I, I keep saying it time and time again. Renault Sport are like the Porsche GT division of hot hatches. They just know how to make a well-sorted car. Right, so conclusion then on the Megan RS. Apologies about how this video is gonna come out. So, is it worth the asking price? Well, the answer is yes, because Renault didn't sell them at the asking price of 50 odd grand. They discounted them to about 40 odd. And at 40 grand for one of these, a couple of years old, it's worth the money. If you're doing track days, if you love driving, you want something that doesn't drink too much fuel, you can get 40 MPG out of them. It looks special, it's unique, it's different. It's just, it's my kind of car. Really like it, it's a cool bit of kit. It's been an interesting week, hasn't it? You know, I've driven the new Audi RS3, that's fantastic. I've driven this, that's fantastic. We're on some positive vibes. I need to find shit cars to call them shit. I'm not, oh well, mind you, it's that Mini GP3, which a video will come out on that eventually soon. But yeah, brilliant car. It works on the track. Whatever skill set level you're at, it, it's just so sure footing on your side. You know, it just encourages you to drive it even more and more without it feeling like a computer game on wheels. It feels natural. The bits that have been done to it, the short shifter and the uh, upgraded uh, pads, good as well. The front end is absolutely licked in. You can just point it wherever you like. Limited slip diff works really well too. It just helps tuck the nose in. And I reckon if you grabbed it by the scruff of the neck, you sense that this car's gonna be an absolute home. But obviously it was on a track day, I had to keep it sensible. This is an owner's car. But yeah, until next time folks, see you later. Thank you.